Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Joining me is Shekhar Ayer ji as we look at the upcoming Lok Sabha elections, all the permutations and combinations. Is one nation, one poll going to be a reality in 2029? That's one of the important topics we'll be discussing. What does it take to do something like that? And many more items. Let's welcome Shekhar Ayer ji. Shekhar ji, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskar Shri ji, Namaskar Ram Ram. Ram Ram sir, and win the 2024 polls. Now, the, the focus is now shifting more towards whether the South also is going to give a resounding mandate to BJP. And the indications appear to be, for example, Kavita Rao's arrest yesterday seemed to say that uh, BJP is feeling very confident about its chances in Telangana, perhaps. No, well, uh, they, they have been making a, a definite push uh, to see that they maximize gains in the south because north is, they're already, they're dominating the northern states. But what they are looking at is to look for those additional seats that will come, that will push for their target of 370 for the BJP and 400 for the NDA. That's where we have seen the prime minister making several trips even today he was in Karnataka, yesterday he was in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Repeatedly he has been making forays, uh, addressing meetings at different places. Now with today the announcement of dates, model code of conduct has come. So no new projects to be inaugurated or anything. But his travels will continue. Now along with that we have seen the announcement of general elections. The dates have come out. And this is going to be a seven phase poll. Like it was in 2019. And uh, in 2014, there were nine phase uh, uh, voting this time, the same as 2019. And uh, what we are seeing is three states will have a seven phase poll. That is Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal. Now that's very interesting, sir, particularly West Bengal. You have seen a lot of poll violence. You have seen opposition being targeted, the candidates being targeted, people not allowed to come out and vote if their vote is for the opposition or if it is suspected that they will vote for the opposition. We have seen this in Bengal, in the Panchayat elections, in the Assembly elections. Now for the Lok Sabha elections, some elaborate arrangements are being made to see that there is sufficient forces on the ground, paramilitary forces, to ensure that to a to great extent possible there is free and fair polling. Now uh, what is interesting, sir, the reaction to the election commission schedule has been quite predictable with opposition criticizing this uh, seven phase poll, that why is the Varadasi election in Varadasi is taking place in the last phase? It was in the last phase even in uh, 2019. Our Prime Minister is getting enough uh, number of days to campaign all over the country. All kinds of things are being said as if that uh, it's only the Prime Minister campaign that is deciding and not what has happened in the last 10 years. So the usual thing is coming out, people are upset that Jammu Kashmir you know, elections are taking place in five phases. And But the Jammu Kashmir assembly elections are not taking place now. So the question that is being asked is why not simultaneous poll in Jammu Kashmir also? To which the chief election commissioner himself said, look, we have time until September. That's the time the deadline the Supreme Court has kept. But what is the main problem was that even now to conduct these uh, parliamentary elections in five phase in Jammu Kashmir, we need 200 uh, companies of the paramilitary forces. If we were to hold the assembly elections, we need an additional 500 companies of the paramilitary forces, which at the moment, if we are holding general elections all over the country, it is very difficult to divert. But then already Omar Abdullah, I mean, uh, Sheikh Abdullah, yeah, Farooq Abdullah and other leaders have been criticizing, saying, what is this? You want one nation, one poll, but you are not able to conduct simultaneous polls. You are not able to conduct. I mean, all kinds of cynical remarks are being, but the fact is, uh, the announcement of the date, you can see that the BJP looks very confident because they are already in that election mode. And all the whining is coming from the Congress, which is saying, seven pays poll, we don't have funds. They are slush with funds. Now, th this is the scenario we are seeing. Now, just for recap, sir, the, the big states, that is Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and West Bengal, together they make for 162 Lok Sabha constituencies. They will have a seven-phase poll. 
that is right from beginning the first phase which is uh, from 19th april and to the last phase which is on the 1st june the results will be out on 4th june now the second phase elections we are going to see on 26th uh, april and uh, five poll i mean five phase uh, elections are take, going to take place in maharashtra as i mentioned jammu kashmir similarly four uh, phase polls will take place in odisha madhya pradesh and jharkhand now odisha is having also the assembly elections along with lok sabha elections now three phase poll is for chatisgarh and uh, assam and two phase poll is for karnataka rajasthan tripura and manipur and single phase poll where maximum number of states are going that's almost 22 states are going which is arunachal your andaman nicobar islands andhra pradesh chandigarh delhi goa gujarat himachal haryana kerala lakshadweep ladakh mizoram meghalaya nagaland puducherry sikkim tamil nadu punjab telangana uttarakhand now the whole the, the 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 grievance of the opposition is that somehow multi phase polling favors the bjp and a single phase would have benefit them but sir we all know election commission cannot make any parties win an election or election phases don't matter it is voters who choose or voters who reject but already we are seeing a, an another narrative to show that the election commission as well as the evm because vv pat is not available in all the not, not in uh, going to be 100% cases all these bahanas have started now because this election is, i feel sir is about prime minister modi not just getting a third term this is prime minister modi getting a very big mandate for a very very large agenda he has on his mind he is thinking of making big changes which he could not do in 2014 which he could not do in 2019 and 2024 he feels he must waste no more time straight get into all those things that need to be immediately radically changed whether it's in agriculture industry or any sector you name it he wants changes and for that you need that kind of legislative backup and that's only possible with this mandate now i have heard opposition leaders even raising this question the bjp is so confident why is it going for alliances why is it going for uh, partnerships why is taking people from other parties good question but the, what the prime minister want is repeatedly you know bjp has been accused of getting less than 40% of the total votes and disregarding the opposition which has won the rest of it and so the prime minister wants as even set a target that he, bjp should win at least 50% of the seats i mean 50% of the votes that, that are cast so you can see that now new momentum has come into this whole electioneering in india now and somewhere along you feel no matter how many faces but this is going to be a very grueling summer because temperature are rising all over the country along with the political temperatures sir thank you so much sir i think uh, this one is much more definitive uh, this could end up being like what they did with gujarat state elections they said that we want a massive mandate we want a two thirds majority in gujarat and they got that and i think modi is saying well if i could pull it off in gujarat why can i not pull it off in the entire country i think one of the things he realized is and i agree with him on this that anything he does is wrong there is i mean show me one thing the congress appreciated of what uh, modi did everything can be wrong so so these kinds of you know anything this guy does is wrong he should be he should go that kind of, he should resign this is no sense there doesn't make any sense people are sir i am also following closely constituency wise popularity of the bjp in tamil nadu because it's a new kid in town sir i am blown away northern tamil nadu which was supposed to be the weak territory of bjp even there they are holding their ground sir they are holding their ground admk is coming a distant third so this is this is going to be a huge setback for dmk i mean even if bjp gets five seats it's a huge setback for dmk the way they used to call themselves that you know nobody this is dravida land nobody can set foot on it all sorts of bs that's going to be a huge setback for them and and the people are really speaking now so let's take a look at that and uh, 
Sir, your opinion, how is South looking for Modi? I mean, one sees, two sees here and there, but other than Karnataka, where he is expected to cross double digits, how confident are they about their Telangana vote? I'm specifically starting with that because that appears to be one state where BJP thinks that they can do extremely well, sir. Definitely, sir. They, they, they are, Telangana is high on their list because South India holds about 129 Lok Sabha seats. BJP already has 28 and 29 rather. And they are, they are, they are looking at uh, increasing, I mean, consolidating, I mean, trying to uh, retain their whatever they had in Karnataka. They want to open account in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. And in Telangana, particularly, they are seeing that last time they had four Lok Sabha constituency seats. This time they are looking at a figure somewhere between 10 and 12 out of the 17. Now, the whole question about action being taken against Kavita now, whether is the BRS being revived with the arrest of Kavita after it was terribly uh, demolished in the Telangana Assembly elections? This is one question. The other question is. A message is going out now that it is BRS is almost is on the knees and therefore many of its leaders are going to the Congress. And some of them could also be looking at BJP as an alternative. And the kind of candidates this time they have chosen, including in Hyderabad, sir, OVC, against OVC, they have put Madhavi Lata, who, who is, a, is a women activist who runs a hospital in Hyderabad. Who has, uh, who has managed to get a lot of attention and she's daring to visit all those lanes and by lanes of Hyderabad where many times opposition candidates have feared to tread. She wants to go into those areas and campaign. She has worked upon Muslim women. She has worked for Triple Tulak. So I'm mentioning this Badavi Lata case only to underscore the fact this time BJP wants to Try in those areas where it, there was only a token fight which was put. Now, Madhavi Lata has been all over the constituency now. And of course, nobody at the moment saying that OVC could lose easily. But definitely, OVC is himself shaken by the fact that BJP is taking the battle in Hyderabad very seriously. And in Telangana, sir, in particularly, what they are looking at is that in the Telangana assembly elections, their vote percentage went up. You can see that it has gone up by more than 14%. I mean, it, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it has gone up by 14%. So that has given them some kind of a confidence that, that they have a core vote and also they are expanding. So Telangana is high on the list. Now, after Telangana, they are looking at both Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Nobody is saying they are going to sweep Tamil Nadu or Kerala or anything. But even a victory of one or two seats. Uh, two seats in Kerala or three seats in Tamil Nadu, that itself will change the dynamic in these states. And in Andhra, they have already entered into an alliance with TDP and Pawan Kalyan's um, Janasena party. So you can see that in uh, the Prime Minister's repeated visits to uh, South, Southern India is largely to convince the rank and file that Tamil Nadu is, I mean, the South is the future for the BJP. They are not going to treat any region as unapproachable or something outside the BJP's influence. This 20, uh, uh, this 2024 elections may be a great game changer. Every time Prime Minister goes to the southern states, whether it is Tamil Nadu or Kerala, the ruling uh, you know, parties in these states are somewhat rattled. Though they keep on saying that is, BJP will get less than Nota, BJP has no support base, but they keep talking about BJP. Thereby acknowledging the fact that the principal opposition to these parties, the DMK alliance in Tamil Nadu, or the left parties and the Congress in Kerala, it is the BJP. So this is exactly the plan of the BJP to show to the voters in the South, look, we are the alternative. We are emerging as alternative and you are not going to get any different results either by choosing the DMK or ADMK in Tamil Nadu or between Congress and the left in Kerala. And we can see that the way the opposition is reacting to all the Prime Minister's visits, one does see there is a lot of uneasiness. They, they keep saying that this is, this is, this is, this is not 
a land where people vote on the basis of religion. They are not attracted by Lord Ram and things like that. But Prime Minister is taking those very commentaries by the opposition leaders to these places and saying, look, the, the opposition is insulting our tradition. And that is gaining traction. And in Tamil Nadu particularly, sir, you have seen how the Padhyatra of uh, Annamalai, the Tamil Nadu BJP president, drew a lot of traction. Now, in a day or two, you will have the list for Tamil Nadu Lok Sabha seats. And I am told Annamalai may be asked to focus on all the constituencies that do the campaign. Similarly, uh, you are going to see the Tamil Nadu uh, MLA, that is uh, Vanithi Srinivasan, too, may not be contesting because she is already a legislator and she heads the Maila wing of the BJP. She will also be tasked with the idea of campaigning in all the constituencies. So definitely, sir, this time, North, North, I mean, the Prime Minister will indeed go to the North repeatedly. But at the same time, the attention that the South is getting this time and along with the East goes to show that BJP has fine-tuned this strategy and is very, very confident that it will get closer to the target of 300 plus or 370 for the BJP. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Now, let's take a quick look at what is happening on the state of health of Mamta Banerjee. Come at election, she suffers an injury. Is there a coincidence there? Sir, this time it's not a coincidence, but there is some kind of a palace. Uh, There's an incident. Uh, there. Yeah, there is a palace intrigue, I must say, because she, uh, that was on Thursday, that was uh, the March the 15th. She returned from, after attending a function to her Kaligat residence. And after that, she went in. One version is as she was, as she walked into the house, she felt somebody had pushed her and she hit a, a, showcase, a showcase, a wooden showcase. But the other version is she entered her house and went to a bedroom and then got onto a treadmill. And as the treadmill started, she felt somebody pushed her and she hit the front portion of the treadmill and she got injured. And incidentally, at the time in the house, Abhishek Banerjee, her nephew, was present because he had also come for that function. Uh, if uh, we, for, I mean, that is inauguration of a statue of, for, I mean, <clears throat> a leading Tridamul leader who had passed away, Subrata Mukherjee, and uh, he had accompanied Mamata to the residence. Now, in the last uh, uh, two, three weeks, we have seen tension brewing among the uh, family members of uh, Mamata Banerjee, particularly her brothers and one of the brothers' son, that is Abhishek Banerjee. Particularly, there was a lot of resentment over the importance that Abhishek Banerjee is getting and uh, Mamata yielding to all his demands, even in the distribution of tickets. One of Mamata's brothers, Baboon, Baboon Banerjee wanted to contest uh, from Howrah, but Abhishek Banerjee refused and he announced the name of another candidate, which upset Baboon and Baboon said, look, we have done so much for the party. We are also part of the party. Why is our voice is not being heard? And he even said, if this is the case, I might as well go and contest for BJP. This upset Mamata and Mamata issued a warning. If Baboon goes and joins the BJP, then she will completely break off all uh, ties with him. And subsequently, he calmed down and he said, that, uh, no, I'm not going anywhere. I will work for Didi. I will work for Tridambul. But something has been brewing in the family and this particular episode. Because when she was taken to SSKM hospital, and SSKM hospital is a very important hospital in Kolkata. And the director of the hospital apparently you know, examined her. There were other doctors examined her and they realized she needed three stitches on her, you know, uh, on her forehead. and Apparently, the doctor asked her how this did happen. Apparently, Mamata told the director of SSKM hospital that I felt somebody pushed me. Now, immediately, police got into that. Police even uh, decided to do a preliminary inquiry as to whether a case has to be registered and, some, and the, whoever is responsible for this had to be, you know, identified. But then I was told... <clears throat> Uh, then the doctor advised her to stay in the hospital, but Mamata insisted on going back, going back home. And <clears throat> subsequently, newspapers published, a I mean, uh, quoted the SSK director as saying that Mamata felt somebody had pushed her. 
and that became a headline all over the bangla media that mamata was pushed in her house which almost attempted to i mean <clears throat> looked like an attempt to murder so there was a lot of sensational thing but then now <clears throat> The SSKM director was told and other doctors were told they have to pipe down that statement. So now they have come with a new version which is saying, look, in a situation when you are above, I mean, when you are falling, it appears somebody has pushed you. It appears somebody has pushed you. So now immediately the, uh, the Trinamool Congress has uh, latched on to that, the, uh, to, I mean, uh, playing down of the aspect of being pushed. But my sources tell me it is Mamata who herself told the doctor that she was pushed. That's how she fell in the front and got injured. Now, all this goes to show, sir, what is happening in her family, what is happening in her party. And similarly, people are recalling the same thing had happened before the 2021 elections. She had gone to campaign in somewhere in North Bengal while, and then while she was shifting aircraft from a helicopter to a uh, a smaller aircraft to reach Kolkata. Apparently, she you know sprained her leg, and when she came out of the airport, she was on a wheelchair. But there again, when doctors advised her rest in the hospital, she said, "No, I'll go home." Then after some time, she was seen walking. Up, I mean, getting up from the wheelchair, walking. So many people try to uh, uh, you know ask whether this is a genuine one, but this time. It does appear to be an accident, a serious accident, and uh, we do not know what is this push being pushed from behind. Now that they are trying to play down the whole thing, and police is not uh, is no longer pursuing this angle, but it has raised question as to what is the uh, the power centers in Trinamool, what kind of overlapping is happening there, is a revolt brewing. Or is the Trinamool leaders, including Mamata Singh, things are very bad for uh, Trinamool. Last time, they had won 22 of the 42 uh, Lok Sabha seats in Bengal, and BJP had won 18. This time, opinion polls are indicating that BJP will definitely improve its numbers, and Mamata could be facing storm in several pockets in many constituencies. And that is what is worrying her. And, uh, the fact that within her party also we have seen clashes between you know leaders, Trinamool leaders, particularly over extortion, over sharing of the collections and things like that. And the Sandesh Kali has brought out even more a, a brutal side to the Trinamool stranglehold, particularly in the rural Bengal, where Trinamool leaders act as uh, agents. They, I mean, they act as uh, you know resident commissioners or some kind of a uh, you know agents of the the regal power and they can do what they want they can push people out of their land and homes can convert those homes into fishery ponds what not and apart from that the sexual exploitation of women which upset everyone and which actually uh, has blown a hole in the mamata's uh, ma mati manush plank has uh, has you know got every rank and file in the party to wonder what the hell is happening in the party and is Mamata losing control? Is Abhishek Banerjee trying to edge out his aunt? And whether other members of the family are resentful of uh, Mamata for giving so much of uh, freedom to Abhishek Banerjee? Now, all these questions have come, sir. And this particular incident this time, because this, this involves uh, Mamata Banerjee's life. That's why you had people write down from the Prime Minister and uh, other leaders, you know, actually expressing um quite uh you know shock at the incident and then conveying the best wishes for a recovery but one thing is clear sir nothing is okay in trinamool of course there are others who say that nobody i mean mamata will manage mamata will get sympathy and the lok sabha tally will not going to differ and it is a bjp that may not do well but i feel sir this time with the kind of push that the bjp is giving and the fact that the elections will be held in seven phases, which means uh, the scope for Trinamool to prevent uh, people from voting, if it suspect that they are not her voters, that that game plan may not work. Sir, in 2021 elections, what Mamta did was she instructed her party members, particularly she instructed her party members to bring their women folk 
and attack the paramilitary forces, central forces. So the central forces are forced into a situation where they will open fire and one such incident happened. And then you can make a controversy over how central forces are going to suck in Bengal. This was their game plan, at least the game plan of the supporters. This time I can see that there are going to be heavy presence of boots on the ground for the simple reason that the central government, the Home Ministry and the Election Commission in particular doesn't want a repeat of all those incidents in these constituencies. Adequate forces on the ground, strong instructions to the poll officials to see that no era ferry is allowed and no interference is allowed during the casting of ballot. So this is going to be a very, very tough election for Mamata and her uh, party people who are used to some kind of a chaos which allows them to do what they want in the booths. Thank you, sir. And now the most important thing, one nation, one poll or reality. First of all, now what has happened is many states go across the five year span of a Lok Sabha uh, term uh, for election. So now if you're going to change the law, you'll have to change the constitution. I think this is a constitutional change wherein you have to curtail some uh, some terms and you have to expand some terms so that everything lines up to 2029. I think that is what is the plan. Uh, I'm sure they have got thought this through. Secretary, any insights on how they are going to pull it off? Sir, if you look at the recommendations of the Ramnath uh, Kovin led committee, which has just submitted the report, uh, this committee was led by the former president, Ramnath Kovin. Now, this, what the report has suggested is that that 2029 parliamentary election could be the beginning of simultaneous elections. So, all the states that can go along with the parliamentary elections will go along with their Lok Sabha elections and polls will be held. And for states where elections are due in 26, that is Tamil Nadu, Kerala, West Bengal. Now, these states will have a term of their house Though they will be elected in 26, they will be in uh, operation only till 29 and when a fresh election will be held. Now, this is bound to create a huge protest from these states, particularly Tamil Nadu, uh, Bengal and Kerala, because they will say, why should we suffer, uh, you know, why should our houses be of three years? See, the, the states will not mind if it is extension of their lifetime of their houses. Curtailment of uh, the term and again re-election, they will oppose. Now, this is one of the suggestions which is being there. And also, we are told that one another suggestion is if the, if the House finds that a leader cannot command its majority, then the House may be allowed to elect another leader for the remaining term of the House so that the elections will not have to be held. This is one proposal which is actually a uh, some kind of borrowed model from Germany where the house elects a leader and for given the fixed period of time the leader fails to keep the confidence of the house for a for a longer time then the house meets to elect another leader and that leader will serve till the remainder part of the term this is one proposal so the suggestions that have been given are are very important suggestions those are suggestions are going to be considered so one can see that, sir, in uh, this Lok Sabha elections are very, very significant because some of the big things are going to happen soon after the Lok Sabha elections. One is, you know, the, the census will have to be held. The 2021 census will, will start from, say, I am told from end of uh, 2024. So entire 2025, the census will be in operation. By 2026, they intend to publish the findings of the census and then start the work on delimitation of constituencies, where the figure will go up. The total number of seats, because it was frozen by Vajpayee government in 2002, now the time has come, they will, it was frozen till 2026. Now they will have to revise the number of seats in parliament and that is a good reason why the new parliament building was constructed with provision for more number of seats. In fact, they can, can house uh, the Lok Sabha, the new Lok Sabha can house more than 100 members. Now, delimitation is another important exercise. Now, after delimitation, you are going to have the women's quota will be implemented. 33% quota will come into effect with enhanced strength of the Lok Sabha, which should not upset the male members because 
overall presence may be same what was last year and extra seats are being created to accommodate women members by having a delimitation now delimitation is a constitutional requirement it has been postponed for several years now finally it will take place particularly the increase in the number all this is upsetting the way the politics has been played so far particularly for parties other than the bjp and they fear that all these proposals one nation one poll delimitation exercise women reservation these are all going to benefit the bjp therefore they might as well you know oppose it with all full uh, power at their command but but bjp is, is very is not going to be back down by those uh, is not going to back down because of these protests they are looking at a scenario after the lok sabha elections where all these things will be rolled out and these are going to be definitely game changing moments for indian politics sir thank you so much sir i think a lot of information there and uh, i would still uh, want to know like for example some states are going for elections in 2023 so 2028 will be their term that means if you go for elections in 2028 and you go for one nation one poll that's even less than a year sir no sir the the states which are going to polls on say now the election that they those who went to polls in 23 their term would end in 28 but lok sabha election be their term would get extended by one year but those who are having elections in 2026 as i mentioned kerala tamil nadu and uh, uh, west bengal now these states would not like their term to be truncated if it is curtailment of the term there is there will be opposition extension they will be happy but anyway there are so many proposals in ramnath coin committee which has looked at amendments that are needed to the constitution and how the house will have a fixed term all those things are measures that is going to create a lot of a stormy debate in parliament but first this lok sabha elections are going to give definitely an increased uh, uh, majority to the bjp which will feel that all these measures have to be undertaken now they have to be implemented they have to be backed by the law so you are going to see a lot of what i would say disruption as opposition calls it because they are calling this one nation one poll as a disruptive exercise but prime minister modi you know loves disruption because he believes this are this is will save a lot of money we won't be frequently in an election mode and governments will be able to concentrate on governance sir along with uh, the simultaneous election to lok sabha and assembly the ramnath kovin committee has also proposed that elections to the municipalities and municipal corporations and other civic bodies be completed within 100 days of the simultaneous elections to lok sabha and assemblies so that within that uh, 100 days that is within 3 4 months this whole election exercise all over the country will end including for local uh, civic bodies now these are proposals which which will require a wider debate in the civil society in the media and as well as uh, in parliament but definitely the one can see the seriousness of the approach and uh, because everyone expects and this is a very unique election set 2024 nobody is has any doubts about the outcome what the mandate is going to be which is the third term for the prime minister setting him in the company of jawarlal nehru who did who did the three terms now what is being looked at with the interest is what is going to be the magnitude of that mandate for modi how tall the mandate is going to be will that mandate give him will that mandate give him enough strength to do things which he could not do in the first term and second term that is some of the very transformational uh decisions and acti- uh, actions which he could not do but this time i can see the prime minister even today when he when he addressed a media conclave it was the last conclave and it was the first after the announcement of dates where he said look i don't go for headlines i go for deadlines i mean i am not interested in uh, doing things just for the sake of you know hitting headlines i want to do things within fixed frame and i believe these things are necessary and i'm going to go ahead and do it so one is going to see 
the opposition again crying holes saying that this election 2024 elections is going to be some kind of a decisive because if modi comes back there are going to be a lot of disruptive changes there are going to be um, because they feel that institutions will get weakened this is opposition narrative but then people want results from the prime minister and prime minister is keen to you know deliver those results that is why 2024 is going to be it's going to be much much different from all the elections we have seen sir thank you sir let's take some questions now if you don't mind sir first question is uh, um vijay uh, thank you so much kedarnath vasudev for becoming a youtube member first question is from vijay kumar shrivastava why something happens to why something happens to mamta banerjee during elections will it wash the sin of sandesh kali and gain sympathy namaskar well sir everybody even when this first incident uh, I mean, this incident of january uh, march 15 uh, came to be known people felt that oh again didi is wanting to opt for the wheelchair for our campaign you know this was a general feeling because this has happened before even earlier she has been prone to attacks she has been prone to car accidents even a few days ago there was a car accident i mean car accidenting her uh, driver put the applied the brakes and there was a jerk and she hurt herself So there have been numerous incidents where we regard, I mean, with her, where she has been injured or she has been attacked when she was in the opposition. The Marxist uh, had attacked her at least not less than twice. So there's something about her that during the time of elections, you know, things do get bloody for her. I mean, literally, and that's why uh, people were first initial reaction was this is. another of the khela hobe type of mamta but when they got to know about the details as to what exactly has happened from various sources that there was worry that's why across the political spectrum leaders sent messages to mamta to get well sir uh, next question please ranget ranga wants to know some anti modi forces are trying to give a twist of quid pro quo on bjp for electoral bonds Will it stick? Will Mamata injury translate into sympathy and votes? Was she pushed for that? Well, uh, I will answer the last question first because it's a continuation of the previous question. One does not know because this even this push theory is now being diluted. From what was initially described as somebody pushed her, now they are saying that when you are falling, you feel you are being pushed by someone. It's all about feeling rather than the reality of somebody pushing you. now as to electoral bonds issue sir the data is so mismatched and there are so many things in that what is coming out is very difficult to pinpoint you know that the benefits accrue to these companies after they made contribution to the party or or that the ed raids took place on these companies and they made the contribution because there are cases where ed rates have happened even after uh, they have contributed now who are the shell companies who involved in buying these shares well because some of the firms like for instance the firm of the lottery king uh, martin santiago martin his company has bought a lot of uh, shares running into 1000 crores so question is who for whom did this company buy shares similarly you know the name of one of those ambani companies have come but this is going to be a cat and mouse game because you will have to do a lot of research a lot of and establish the identity of each of these companies that has bought the bond but already we have seen home minister amit shah has been uh, going on the offensive on this issue he has come with a figure saying that bonds worth 14000 crores were bought bjp got only 6000 crores Rest eight thousand crores went to the opposition, and he said, "Congress has a habit, not not now for a long time, that if they collect eleven hundred rupees, the Congress leader will hand over only hundred rupees to the party and pocket the rest thousand rupees." To which which we have also discussed earlier that Congress party never the Congress leaders never encourage contribute to the party. They always felt they would collect that contribution and use it as their lever. to get the party leadership to do them i mean to do what they want sir 
Thank you, sir. Next question, please. Sarvani Tupuri wants to know, sir, why Karnataka and Telangana are not on the same phase? Because every time Muslims from Karnataka come to Hyderabad and give illegal votes and vice versa. Sir, Chief Election Commissioner did some explanation today that, you know, in some places, if you look at the previous uh, uh, 2019 schedule, you know, as just was mentioned, some of the states have been swapped. And also the fact that the movement of paramilitary forces has been kept in mind. That's the biggest factor. And second thing is movement of poll materials, particularly in this case, EVM boxes. The way they are being moved to the states has also kept into account how the elections should be held. There have been some changes. It's not just repeat of 2018 pattern as such in terms of phases. Yes, the number of phases is same, but the states going to the polls with those phases have been changed. And the Chief Election Commissioner's uh, explanation is, look, this is for our administrative convenience and also to ensure there is complete free and fair election. But opposition is saying, look, what is this? Why, why you are uh, holding uh, multi-phase elections? If you are thinking of one nation, one poll, can't you have poll on all one day? Yes, there are 22 states going to polls on one day. But some of the other cases are cases that have been identified by our security agencies are very sensitive. That's the reason why Jammu Kashmir elections, assembly elections are not taking place along with the Lok Sabha elections. Because the election commission has gone by the input given by the agencies, intelligence agency. Sir, even BJP was among the parties that had urged the central government to hold elections, uh, simultaneous elections in Jammu and Kashmir. Well, after the Lok Sabha elections are over, one could see the exercise start and assembly elections in JNK are also completed. Sir. Next question, please. Mamat Kishore wants to know, is Mamata fall a staged act like what happened during assembly elections? Will she get sympathy this time too? I think we have answered this. Sir. Let's move on to the next one. Magnet Ranga wants to know, isn't it disappointing that some important places like Bengaluru has Friday as election day, low turnout as long weekend and minorities voting en masse means result would not be on expected lines. Well, the election commission is also mounting a campaign to see that people don't treat it as a holiday. They are getting several celebrities and YouTube influencers to mount campaign, urging people to vote. Now, the consideration that went into choosing the dates was those days should not clash with any festival days. Those dates should not clash with examinations. So the students are not inconvenienced uh, traveling from their home to the examination centers. That was the primary concern. Otherwise, they, are, they have gone with the advice given by the state of the security authorities when it comes to finalizing the schedule and also the availability of paramilitary forces. As I said, these forces would move from one state to another state. And as soon as the election is completed there, they, they would move on to the next state. So there is a logistics involved in the movement of paramilitary forces. And therefore, uh, so if things are not on expected lines and they are different from the way the elections were held in last time, there is a reason which election commission says has got to do with our efforts to ensure a free and fair poll. So, Thank you, sir. And Venkat Raghavan, Venkat Raman wants to know how to contact with you. That is me. I have shifted my vote from my native to my current city ever, ever so seamlessly just using my mobile. I want to explain you that and take it to the world. You know, you can write an article and send it to SI, my initials at pgurus.com. And we'll certainly look at it. And if it's good, then we'll publish it. We'll be happy to. Next one, please. Sachin Thapur wants to know, can ED arrest Kejriwal when MCC is in place? The answer is yes. We answered this in a previous uh, uh, hangout with uh, Sumit Peer. I just don't want to repeat the same thing again. ED has its own powers. That doesn't come in the way of election. Next one, please. Uh, ARS wants to know, ask Shekharji, we are hearing changes on the ground in the TN by many experts. What is the feedback you are getting? Will Kerala and Tamil Nadu support the BJP? Sir, I want to make one thing very clear. When we are talking of ground changes in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, we are not saying that the BJP is going to see polls in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. We are not saying that. What we are saying is definitely you are going to see the BJP winning at least a couple of constituencies. That is because of the mood of the electorate. Now, DMK has been 
trying to convince its allies as well as everyone else that look in we are again coming back with the same number that we got in 2019 which is actually 39 out of 40 but everybody says it is not going to be that easy for aia dmk or dmk and <clears throat> more than the numbers what we are going to see is the enthusiasm for the bjp which has been generated by prime minister's visits as well as by the groundwork done by anamalai Next one, please. Thank you so much, Sham Tarun, for your generous super sticker. Next one. Ustad Pritujin Chanchal. Um, sir, do you think Modi government has been caught off guard in this latest Soros Omidya electoral bonds toolkit? And on the ground, it will dent Modi's incorruptible image. Well, the attempt is to you know raise questions about his integrity, saying that these electoral bonds are a proof that the Modi government is corrupt. But there is a difference between contribution to a party and individual ministers, you know, uh, having, I mean, managing to acquire assets disproportionate to the known source of income. I mean, this is to the contribution to the party. There was no ban on contribution to the party. The only question is what was the mechanism of those contributions? The mechanism of this case was that only the donor and the receiver would know to which party the money is going and as we know that since 2014 all these parties have been complaining to the government that we need anonymity otherwise we feel scared to make contributions now this matter came up even the last thing when 2017 it was to be abolished and uh, they, they 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 the view was look this is not the best of the system but then this is the only way you can prevent the entire transaction being done in black. And sir, ever since the Supreme Court struck down the electoral bonds, the most loud thinking that is coming is, at least instead of striking it down, they could have made some improvement. This is the point that Amit Shah also voiced yesterday at the media conclave. He said, you could have simply said this, you know, this is, um, this has to be discontinued. Or you could have come with an alternative plan. Supreme Court didn't do any of this. Rather, it has again put the clock back, saying the old system of contribution will continue. This has raised questions as to uh, the whole de these developments have they helped in bringing more property and uh, curbing corruption, sir? Thank you, sir. Next question from Mr. Barani: uh, If BJP alone gets two-thirds special majority, what would be the advantage that a sitting government or maybe NDA can get? Well, it will enable faster passage of legislations that are absolutely necessary in certain areas uh, to see that the India develops faster. That, that's the whole idea is sometimes some changes cannot be brought about, legal changes cannot be brought about unless you have full majority in uh, I mean, Lok Sabha as well as in the Rajya Sabha. Otherwise, it's going to be a problem. Therefore, I think what we are going to see is that if the BJP does very well in these uh, Lok Sabha elections and also in the state elections that are taking place this time, the numbers in the upper house will definitely go for the BJP. And that will help the BJP in, in pursuing its legislative agenda, where they do not depend on other parties. Sir. Thank you, sir. Next one. Narayan P wants to know, uh, ask Shekharji, is this an accident because she is trembling in her boots? All of a sudden, Ram Naomi holiday, your views please. Well, she she is rattled by the uh, moves of the opposition, particularly the BJP. And she is also upset with the way her party leaders have conducted themselves. Some leaders have even uh, been caught with those cash and seizure, which has raised questions about the property in the conduct of our ministers, huge amounts of cash were recently seized by our supporters. So, therefore, uh, for her, I think it is a difficult situation because this accident ap appears to be genuine from what I gather. And also the fact that there is some palace intrigue involved that adds more uh, tension to this whole thing. So, but at the same time, I think Mamata knows that BJP strengths has not been diminished and uh, BJP could still gain some advantages because it has a purpose of 
you know, staying on and standing on and then continuing the fight for them. That's why Mamta is very, very keen that in the Lok Sabha elections, the BJP gets a good crash heap. Well, that may not happen exactly because things are changing to a great extent. Next one, please. Aditya Prakash wants to know, Jai Sri Ram, sir, with Mamta, will this be a boy who cried wolf case? Even if it was a genuine accident, it will be seen as a way to take over the Sandes Sandesh Kali incident. Can this work? Well, sir, people are actually shocked that this incident has happened. You know, the fact that she fell by accident or somebody pushed her is secondary. The, fa the thing that this incident happened has shocked many people. Across, I would say, caste lines. And as in Bengal, it often happens. And people feel that, you know, that uh, no harm should come to Mamta. That's very important, sir. Venkateshan Ramaswamy wants to know, talk on Kejriwal, why no arrest? Do election Delhi seats discuss on this, sir? Well, well, sir, Kejriwal has been fearing arrest, but it has not happened so far. Today, he also managed to get relief from that uh, court, which said that... Uh, you know, you need not uh, worry and uh, then court also released him on bail. So that has given him some comfort, definitely. So, Next one, please. Uh, Balaji wants to know, many people say that Mamta's drama slash injury stunt won't create sympathy this time. BJP seems to be racing towards 28 to 30 seats in West Bengal. Your take, sir. So definitely BJP will improve its uh, tally of 2019, which was 18. I, I am expecting a figure of, say, maybe 22-23 easily in West Bengal, sir. Because of the mood caused by Sandesh Kali and the arrogance of Trinamool leaders initially to completely uh, write off the incident and saying that, you know, it's nothing, no big deal. But the people of uh, Sandesh Kali, the women of Sandesh Kali, they have spoken out. And that's why today Mamata is forced to change the accused. Uh, I mean, she had to first arrest the accused, the Shah, Sheikh uh, Shah, Shah Jahan, Shah Jahan yeah. Sheikh Shah Jahan, and then subsequently also a desperate bit to prevent his being handed over to the central uh, central uh, agencies has also failed. Sir. And that brings us to a close of today's program. Very enlightening and very in, uh, enriching. Uh, Shekharji, as always, a pleasure having you on our pl platform. And viewers will be back on Wednesday at uh, 10 a.m. with uh, another session with Shekharji in Hindi. Thank you once again, sir. Namaskar, Dhaniwad, and have a great day. Thank you, sir. Namaskar.